Hi guys, I'm Al Gracian from elbowpepper.com. Today we're doing another experiment. This is a follow-up experiment to one that I had done recently where I was focusing on worm castings as a nutrient source. Let's look at another nutrient source that I've selected for this experiment. We're once again looking at worm castings, but now we're also looking at a finely sifted compost I want to see how this compares to other things when you're looking at using containers and maybe something like a seed starting mix. So I have here uh, some different lettuces and first though I want to show you the specific variety of lettuce that I'm growing. This is from Botanical Interest and it's called a Black Seeded Simpson. This has a very fast growing cycle it only takes 40 days to reach maturity, which means that we'll be able to get the final results much quicker. So let's take a closer look at these before I start thinning them out and we can just see how they're looking so far. In each of these containers, I put five seeds and most of them had five out of five that germinated. I know that one had four out of five which was this one here, but really these seeds all had excellent germination and uh, I would say that any of these mixes worked fine for getting the seeds to sprout and start growing. But the compost was actually the one that gave me the least amount of growth after a couple of weeks. In this one, I'm using a 50-50 mix of compost and worm castings. And by introducing more of the, of the worm castings, I'm getting better growth. And over here, I have only worm castings. Here, just for something to try out, I'm using some pine needles again, and I'm using worm castings and compost. So I have 25% pine needles and an equal amount of compost and worm castings to complete the mix. As a reference point, each of these containers holds two cups or a pint. So that can give you an idea of uh, how large these are. This one, which I had actually uh, been considering as my control, was a Miracle Grow seed starting mix. And I'm surprised to see that really this one has given me the best growth so far. Now, over time, I'm very interested to see what we're going to get moving forward. Is this going to get depleted and will these plants start to suffer? we're going to be finding out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to thin these out. I'm going to pick the strongest seedling and snip out the rest. That way we can just allow one in each of these to grow to full maturity so we can really see the potential that we have with each of these. All right, so I've culled the herd and now let's come back in a couple of weeks and see the progress. Here's the spot where I'm growing the lettuce for this experiment. I have them placed in the best position, right in the center. And this is what the light setup looks like. And I want to show you how each of these plants kind of looks. So I'm gonna move them so we can get a better look. So after one week of thinning these seedlings out, there is a dramatic difference in the growth among each and every one of these. These don't even look like the same variety of lettuce, so I'm kind of assuming that they are, but I mean really these are not genetic clones. But these two here are definitely the ones giving us the best growth. In the back we have just the compost only, just the worm castings only, and then there is our control, that miracle Grow seed starting mix. It's been another week and I just want to do another update. This one just really doesn't look like the same variety, but this is the compost, the worm castings, and the pine needles. And this is the compost and the worm castings. And this one is the Miracle Grow. Back here we have the worm castings. And this one is just compost. I think in another week 
I'm going to have even more dramatic results for us to check out. All right, guys, it's been three weeks since we thinned out the seedlings, and this is what we have. Let's look at each of these and see which one worked out the best for us. Over on this side, we have some excellent growth with 50% compost and 50% worm castings. And you can see uh, this plant is loving life and doing very well. Now, on this one, we were using half worm castings, half compost, but we also had 25% pine needles. So maybe those added something to the mix, but if nothing else, they helped to expand our volume. And at the same time, it doesn't really look like, like we had any detrimental effects. So maybe in a lower ratio, using something like pine needles might be a possibility to make your mix go as far as you can. But over here, we had just the worm castings, and this is how those performed. Not too bad, but not as good as what we'd seen earlier. And when we used just pure compost, we did get some nice growth, a healthy plant, but not as much vigor, not as much growth as with the others. Still, even this is pretty good compared to this. Yes, our control, that miracle Grow seed starting mix, you go to the store, you use your hard-earned money to buy a retail bag of something, and over the period of several weeks, this is what you get. Now, how could somebody possibly sell a product like that and think that that's okay? Well, it's because you're supposed to buy more products when you're using this. If you adhere strictly to the instructions on this bag, which I just want to mention is several years old now, so it's not the latest formulation, but this uh, regimen that they outline is to shortly after the first true leaves form to transplant the seedlings into a miracle grow potting mix and then to feed with miracle grow plant food following the package instructions. So you are supposed to germinate your seeds in this. Very soon after they've germinated, you turn around, you take them into, an into another product, into another potting mix. And then of course, you're also instructed to feed them with some sort of a feed such as this. So they've really got you on a complete outline, a complete regimen of products that you have to go through. You can't just you know, use that seed starting mix in of itself and think that it's going to perform great. Um, so the question is, is that really what you want to be doing? Is that really what you want to be dealing with? But quite importantly, is that really necessary? Look at the growth that we were able to get germinating seeds, getting them to, to actually sprout, but at the same time to grow into strong, vigorous plants without having to resort to any liquid feeds, without doing any supplemental uh, nutrients, and without having to quickly repot them into something that maybe has more nutrients in it. It's very possible. And amazingly, we're working with something that we could all generate on site using our natural gardening processes, taking waste, processing it into something beneficial that now gets us going the next year in our seed starting and allows us to be much more self-sufficient and obviously more sustainable. After having completed this experiment and the previous one, which only used worm castings, we're able to gain some extra insights into some practices that you may have come across, particularly we're talking about soil sterilization I don't know if you've ever seen that uh, on how you can literally try to kill all the pathogens, all the, the harmful fungi and bacteria and diseases that are in a soil like a potting mix, a seed starting mix. That way you can give your seeds a perfect environment where they'll be trouble free, they won't be harmed by anything, it can help to prevent damping off. That's kind of the argument for soil sterilization or pasteurization. Rather than trying to kill off everything, creating this big vacuum in which anything, including pathogens, can grow and thrive, why not 
just pump it full of useful beneficial organisms that are going to maintain a healthy biology in that soil and going to give your plant a great start all throughout its life too. Let's just think about what happened using this. If you really zoom in here, you can see how the leaves have literally become overrun by disease. Look at what's happening to these leaves. They really don't look well at all. But we don't have any signs of that going on with the rest of these plants. These ones that are made from worm poop and made from, from compost that, that has bugs and stuff that had been all through it. But to me, what I'm seeing is this is the way to go. This is what you want to do. And I think that's an extra insight that we can take away from this if we're thinking about do we want to go for some highly sterile environment or do we want to go a different direction using something that's teeming with beneficial life with good microbes. Is that how maybe we want to go about keeping pathogens in check? Well, I hope that this was an interesting experiment for you. I know I was able to learn some things and I also feel good knowing that if I ever need to, it will be very easy for me to make something that I can grow my seedlings in and it doesn't have to be a complicated thing. I can see how by doing a couple tests, I can identify components and ratios of things that will work and then I can use those on a larger scale when it comes time to really get things ready for the spring. It's not a hard thing to do and it's something that you can do too even if you don't have many resources. Starting out it could be hard. Maybe you don't have any worm systems in place, you don't have any composting in place. This shows the benefits of trying to fit those into your gardening regimen where you can, where your situation allows. So. I think that those are excellent goals to look at to try to see if there's a way that you can fit those into your gardening practices and gain the benefits of those, thereby having more independence uh, and less reliance on external inputs and of course on commercial products. There's nothing wrong with buying things, but sometimes you can get better results by using free resources. That's a win-win, isn't it? So at least knowing how to do it and knowing that it is an option and that it will work, that's good to know. That can help us and we can use that information to help others so that they too can enjoy their gardening and get the best results possible. I feel bad for people that might try to use a bag of some retail seed starting mix, not pay attention to all the extra supplementation required and uh, then get very disappointing results. Can you imagine your first time trying to grow some seeds thinking, yeah, I'm going to save some money as opposed to buying them from the store. And then that's kind of what, you know, your potting mix turns out. It's pretty sad, isn't it? But we know better now, don't we? I appreciate you guys watching this video, taking time to check it out. Uh, Please, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe. I hope to be able to share some other insights uh, going forward with everyone as we continue to come up with some great ideas for how we can always grow in our gardening. So make sure you give it a thumbs up if you haven't already. And as always, guys, happy gardening.